Hi and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Today we'll be seeing what is a rigid body in Unity. Welcome to Vinic Studio. Let's start making games. Now there's a physics rigid body. According to definition of physics, a rigid body is something that does not deform even when force is applied to it. But in case of Unity, that is not the definition. Any game object in Unity that obeys the laws of physics is a rigid body. To convert a game object into a rigid body, you just have to add the rigid body component to it. Now before we get into how to apply force on rigid body, how to move an object that is a rigid body, we'll just get some concepts clear. So first thing, a rigid body is different from a collider. A collider is something that defines the boundary of a game object and rigid body defines the mass and the other properties on how it will behave to the physics forces inside Unity Game Engine. Now all the calculations related to rigid body is done by the Unity Physics Engine. Unity Physics Engine does not take into account all types of rigid body when calculating the forces. In order to understand this in depth, you should know about the types of rigid body in Unity. The first one is the static rigid body. And if you're making a 3D game, a static rigid body is something that has a collider component but doesn't have a rigid body component. Then comes a dynamic rigid body. Dynamic rigid body is something that will be affected by physics forces and has a rigid body component attached to it. Then we have kinematic rigid body. Kinematic rigid body are basically static rigid bodies but can be converted to dynamic rigid body during gameplay. Now let's go ahead and add a game object to our scene. So I've added a cube. By default, it adds a box collider to the cube. So this is a static rigid body when physics calculations are involved. So if I go ahead and add a rigid body to it, rigid body component, so this makes it a dynamic rigid body. Now if I check this option as kinematic, then it will become a kinematic rigid body. Now to understand how it works in the game, so if I uncheck kinematic and remove the rigid body component, so if I play the game, you can see that nothing happens to the cube, no physics forces are acting on it. Now if I go ahead and add a rigid body component, so you can see that the cube fell down. So by default, if a rigid body component is attached, then the unity's forces, that is the default forces like uh, gravity, friction, everything will start affecting the rigid body. Now to check our kinematic rigid body, we can just add a rigid body component, mark it as kinematic and play our game. So in this case, the object is basically static. If I uncheck is kinematic, then the object starts to fall. If I check it again, then the object again becomes a static rigid body. So this is just to tell Unity that this is a static body, but we might convert it to a dynamic rigid body at any time in gameplay. So all that being said, now let's go to the properties of rigid body. So the first property is the mass. So you can define the mass. Uh, the gravitational force that the game object ex experiences is totally dependent on the mass. Then comes the drag. Drag is basically horizontal and vertical movement in the linear direction. So if you increase the drag, the friction between the object and the surrounding environment will be more. Next comes the angular drag. Angular drag is very similar to drag but only comes into picture when the object is rotating. So it is very useful if you're having a rotating object, something like a ball, which is moving. So angular drag will be helpful when the ball is rotating. Then the use gravity function can be unchecked. If it is unchecked, then the gravity forces will not act on rigid body. Now we already saw what is kinematic does. Next is the interpolate option. So if for some reason the moment of your rigid body is jittery, then you can use this option to smoothen the moment. Next is collision detection. Once a rigid body is added, it will detect the collision if the box collider or any other type of collider is attached to the game object. If you don't want the collision to be detected, then you will have to remove the collider. But the collision detection option here allows you to select whether you want discrete collision detection or continuous. Then you have this constraint options. And in the constraint option, you can select the position. You can freeze the position in X, Y, and Z. And you can also freeze the rotation in X, Y, and Z. Now let's add a plane to our scene. Okay, let's move the cube above the plane. Okay, so the cube has a rigid body and is not kinematic. The plane only has a collider. So if I play the game, 
the cube falls on the plane and it stays on the plane. So now let's try applying force to the cube. So let's just add a simple script. Let's call it add force. So the first thing you need is to get the rigid body component. So we need a variable of type rigid body. Let's call it RB. Then we need to assign the rigid body using the get component. Now we have the rigid body component, so we can just say RB dot add force. Then you just give a vector three here. So we don't have a vector three, so let's create a vector three here. Vector three. Then we'll call it as force value equal to new vector three. And we'll just set a value in the x axis as 10, 0, 0. Now we can pass in the force well and set the force mode. So there are different types of force mode. One is force, which will be a continuous force. Then there is impulse. So impulse is a force for a small time period. Then there is velocity change. So if you set the velocity change, then the velocity will change from the current value to the value that we have set. Then there is acceleration. So the difference between velocity and acceleration is acceleration will go on increasing by the magnitude of the vector three that we have provided. So let's say force mode dot impulse for the sake of testing. So let's go back to unity. Let's just make this vector as a public vector so that we can change it from the unity inspector. You can also serialize field. So you can see that it has a value of 10 in the X direction. So let's play the game. So you can see that my cube was pushed away from the plane. Now, if you want to set the velocity of the rigid body, you can just say rb dot velocity is equal to force well. So it will just give it a velocity of 10 in the x direction. And if we play the game now, so you can see that the cube has a velocity of 10 and it started moving in the x axis until it reached the end of the plane where the gravity acted and it fell down. There will be one issue when you set the velocity. Since we had set it in the start, there was no issue. If we do the same thing in update, so let's go and create the update. So this will set the velocity of the game object every frame. So even if the gravity acts on it, it will reset the velocity to 10, 0, 0. So that means the cube will not be affected by the gravity. So you can see that the cube is still going in the x axis. So let's just zoom out to see where the cube went. So the cube is going here. So it's not falling down. That's because in every frame we are resetting the velocity to 10, 0, 0. So you should keep this in mind. If you're going to set the velocity, it should be set only once. Otherwise, it will not be affected by the other forces. Now I created a simple script for moving the player. So let's just remove this script and add the player control script to this. So let's just open it so that you'll be able to understand. So we're not doing much. We are just getting the rigid body. Then we have a magnitude. Then we're initializing a vector three. Then we're getting the horizontal axis to the X value of the vector three and the vertical axis to the Z value. The reason we are taking to X and Z value is because the player will be moving in the X Z plane. The Y is upward direction. We don't want to move in the upward direction. So then you're just adding a force of in the direction provided by the horizontal and vertical input. And then the magnitude is defined by the force magnitude, which you can control using the variable called force mag. So let's go back and see how it works. So I'll play the game. So if I press the right arrow, so you can see that the cube is trying to move on the right side. And if I press the left arrow, it tries to move in the left direction and so on and in all direction. So the force was little high, so I was not able to control it. But one thing that you saw that the cube was rotating when I tried to move it. So it was rotating along the X axis, which I don't want. So what you can do is you can just go to freeze rotation and freeze the rotation in X and Z. So now if I try to move my cube, so you can see that the cube did not rotate this time. Now there are some properties that are different in the rigid body 2D. For example, let's go ahead and add an empty game object. 
so that we'll be able to add a rigid body 2D. So you can see that the options here are a little different. For example, the S kinematic is not present. In place of S kinematic, you have a body type option and you can select kinematic from here. In the 3D rigid body case, you cannot assign a physics material under the rigid body component, but the option is available under box collider. But in case of 2D, the physics material can be applied directly to the rigid body component. And there are some extra options like use auto mass. So auto mass is able to define the mass of the game object based on the collider size and the scale of the game object. Also drag is renamed as linear drag here. And gravity, you don't have the option to switch off gravity here, but you have the option to control the scale. So basically if you want to switch off gravity, you have to set it to zero. Then there is an extra sleeping mode option. So in case of your 2D game, if, if you're not going to interact with an object immediately, then you can just select it as start asleep so that the rigid body component will be asleep when the game start and it will not be taken into computation. So this is more of a performance optimization part. Other than that, all the options are same as the 3D. Only thing that you have to remember is when you're accessing the rigid body from the code, you have to access it as rigid body 2D and a rigid body 2D will work only with a collided 2D. So that's it for Unity's rigid body. And if you have any other questions regarding rigid body, you can leave them in the comment box below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.